I'm gonna text Ian. I just texted him where you at. So if Ian isn't coming on, do we want to just reschedule for Wednesday or do we want to try and go? Because I mean, with this, I can only go for an hour at this point. Um. Wednesday, I can go till 10. Yeah, I'll leave it up to you, Darian. Do you want to um, fuck around a little bit or just reschedule? Well, reschedule is fine with me. I'm re like, I might be stuck here in this You're exact same spot. <laughs> yeah. Um, but will I'm... Wednesday work for you? So this is my uh, long weekend coming up. Mm -hmm. So I could do <clears throat> Thursday. Fucking yeah, Thursday, or really Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I can't do Saturday, but mm -hmm. you know, I think Sunday I'm on call, so I would be randomly leaving every five minutes. But okay. yeah, I mean, Thursday, Friday. When we? Enough. What about you, Darian? Tentative Thursday. Yeah. Okay. Word up. And then we'll, when we hear from Ian again. He's going to wake up and be like, oh no. Right, yeah. Like, like eight, eight, then, yeah. As soon yeah. as we all log off, he's going to get back. I guarantee it's going to be like 2 a.m. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what happened? We'll see you guys. Young. We got to, we got to, here, here, here. We got to pretend we did something monumental. Oh, we should, uh, we should all say we figured out what the mall is. Okay, so we'll be vague oh, what, in what the group we, chat, right? We need a we need a good fake explanation. Um, okay, okay, okay. That uh, if, and Bailey, don't say anything. Uh, Darren, I should come up with this. Darren, what what should the mob be? Like our big discovery. Ian, I mean, our bastion. Oh, it yes. The initial maw was the first bastion from the first iteration of the first universe. Oh, I like that. Here we have to. And it was like, when he melted down. Wait until like nine or until he texts yes. first. Yeah. Okay, so team game plan. That is the first, that is the mall is the first bastion from the first ever universe, okay? And like, what if it's a, um, like, bro, I can't believe it this whole time. Did you know? Oh yeah, we can just- We, got, we can't we, you, we have to wait a long time to come out and say it. I love the idea of like a turncoat character and where it's like, Ian, all right, perfect. All right, okay, cool. Ian break. See you guys. Let me see you boys. Aloha. That's so bad. If Ian AWOLs again, uh -huh. I'm driving down there and finding him myself. I mean, like, and he's only 20 minutes from me. I can yeah, do it too. Five hours from me. I've got a van. I don't. Keep that man. I, I have a room in my house I call a dungeon because it's the game room. And so he's going to stay in there until next game. Works for me. I oh. endorse it. Oh. Everything oh, no. about that was kidnapping. Yes. And, and yeah. Yes. It's actually false imprisonment because you're not a. Uh... Uh, prison guard, so it's called false imprisonment. Uh, but because it's not my uh, not my area, so I don't care. For legal reasons, that right. was a... come on. Coward. Coward. So it's all right. I, mean, I was gonna throw him in the back of my trailer. I mean that's. that's I messaged him with text and Discord. Uh, well, really, do you guys want to hear some bullshit? Yeah. I'm sure. Here, I didn't forget. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Look who decided to show up. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> the prodigal robot returns. Guys, uh, please. Well, I promise I didn't. Hang on, wait, stop talking. My my headset's fucking up, and for some reason. Okay, hello. Hey. Yeah. No, hang on, that's yeah. still wrong. Okay, hello. Hey. Guys, I promise hello. I didn't forget. I was yeah. super busy with other things. Uh -huh. I was not. Yeah. I didn't. I would never forget. Uh -huh. Our beloved D and D. I no. I'm not a bad player, guys. Please. I see how that important we are to you, Ian. That's too much. Don't be mean. I see how much you care. I'm kidding. 
Uh, Throw him in the that trailer. Was perfect perfect entry. <laughs> uh, I wow. think that was the equivalent to you bringing donut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chill. Forever. Last game. Oh, uh, well, current time. It's morning, day 44 of 1379. Last game, you guys patched up the traumatized crew of the Wandering Albatross, the interdimensional research vessel, uh, after rescuing them from the Aetherfed Abolith and got to know them and their dimension a little bit better, making sure there weren't any other monsters aboard the ship, and starting the long road to repairing it and cleaning it. If ship repairs all you do, you could have the ship ready to fly by nightfall today. I believe last time you guys said you just wanted to fly in the upper atmosphere to avoid prying eyes, but otherwise fly directly to Thunderscrim. Yep. And if you still wanted to do that, you would arrive in Thunderscrim in three days, so you'd get there nightfall again, day 47. Is that still the plan? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, I basically, I think Bastion just spends his time fixing up all the robots. Uh, that way we got, you know, much easier way of getting everything fixed. Mm hmm Yeah, start the repair droids first. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Do any of you guys talk about anything fun or do anything extra while the wrench turning is happening? I mean, I'm just out here talking religion the whole time. That's my thing, is trying to figure out how their gods work, because if we can find out more about their gods, we possibly can fix things on our own. I knew you guys yeah. were fucking with me. Uh, Norella Gandhi. Oh, shit, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, Everything you said fucking was idiot. Bullshit. Wait, what? Yeah, you fucking assholes. When you guys <laughs> texted me yesterday, you're like, by the way, Bastion is the Maw. Oh, the first, oh, oh. Was like, the first universe. Yeah, and I was like, are you guys, are you guys fucking with me? And everyone's like, no. Why would we ever do that to you? We're not evil. Uh huh. Uh huh. What? What? Come on. Anyway. I'm still trying to meditate and choose, um, a little guy. learn how to use these swords. Okay. Yeah, uh, as far as talking about religion, uh, Norella Gonhi, who's the Govlin nav navigator and chaplain, she's a, a Naumator, or the Starfinder priest, and she will be happy to talk to you about religion, mostly the Starfinder. Um, it, you can tell that Everyone is so sick of listening to her preach, and she's so happy to have someone to preach to that she hasn't been preaching to for like decades as they've been trapped here. So she's very happy to talk to you as much as you want all the time. Well, and I'm also explaining all of our pantheons to her, like, and then there's yeah. this and there's that. As far as Pale knows them, of course. Yeah, yeah. And then, um,. As far as meditating to use the beam blade, I believe you got it to, like, light up last time, right? Yes. Yeah, um, go ahead and make me... Go ahead. What? Go ahead. Oh, uh, go ahead and make me a... Was I making... I keep forgetting what rolls I was having you make. Um, wasn't, like, a religion uh -huh. check. I and wish, like, in... Where... In Starfinder, the game Starfinder, mm -hmm. there's a a role called mysticism. <laughs> and next game when I next campaign when I force upon you the Ethereum system, which is like squishing Pathfinder so cool. in 3.5 and 5e all together, there will be a mysticism skill. So, congratulations. But uh, unless you can remember yeah, really having your role. Really no. Okay, make a wisdom, make a religion check. Yeah, it's more like meditation. You're not the the Dane isn't a god. It's more of just a an aspect Our, of the universe. Great wisdom. Gotta get in touch with your midichlorians. Uh huh. Great wisdom, your... then. I mean, I guess. <laughs> are you are you proficient in religion? Because I feel like you being a more spiritual person, it would be easier for you. I'm, religion, more... I'm, at, I'm better in wisdom than I am religion. <laughs> really? Yeah. You're talking about wisdom saves or wisdom checks? Uh, uh wisdom and shit. Okay. That's a 15. Okay. Now, I would say you, you don't get it to work again. 
but you are getting steadily more and more familiar with every part of it. I have a plus two in, in wisdom saves and wisdom checks, but I have a minus one in religion checks. How? Uh, because religion is intelligent. Uh, what is it? Uh, that religion was wisdom based. It is based. Ooh. <laughs> no, he's right. Oh, it's intelligence based. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. The because fuck? technically in this game, religion is just a matter of like, what do you know about the gods? Oh, like, religious history, I guess. Yeah, it's it's nerd emoji religion rather than like, I'm a pious man. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah but- next next campaign, we're using my homebrew thing. It's an intelligent saving <laughs> bro. Okay. Well, what fucking <laughs> wisdom skill would it be? Um... It's not fucking nature. Well, the way Henry would say, animal handling. Well, what do you mean? Nature is intelligent, too. Is it really? Yeah. It's it's a joke because, you know. What's the animal Animal handling is the skill associated with, like, hey, this horse is scared. Calm it down with your. The the joke with that nature abilities. Like they're animals. Would it be survival? Rival's wisdom. Yeah, survival's yeah. wisdom, but I mean, like, as far as learning how to meditate. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just make me a, a wisdom a wisdom save. Or insight. Yeah. Mm. Get insight into yourself. Wouldn't be Arcana Ooh. either. I mean, insight, you know, that's a fair point of... Actually, wait. Your, what are you trying to meditate of the on? Of the universe. Because Bailey, would it be persuasion to make yourself? It, is Carolina persuading herself to meditate? Maybe. Because more of you guys have never asked anyone, but a, a Dane would describe using telekinesis or using a beam blade as imagine you had a rubber band on your brain. And you're pushing that rubber band Imagine. away from you. Yeah, what? And then you can touch things within the rubber band. Imagine your brain's made out of rubber. Yeah. A rubber Imagine room. dragons. A rubber room with rounds. Huh. Imagine dragons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> imagine <laughs> dragons like fucking balls on your face. <laughs> Imagine it. <laughs> oh my fucking, fucking god. Deep throw gobble me. <laughs> Goblin? I hardly know him. I uh-huh. g- 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 yeah. I mean, per- persuasion or insight would—that'd be my best fate. Yeah, let's let's do let's do insight. As you you do an insight check on the universe and the matter within. Vibe check. For okay, well, I, I, yeah. I rolled really I rolled really low. I rolled a two, so that's a nine. <laughs> okay, uh, same same thing as before. Is is you're falling into the pseudo trance more easily but it's not a your, your brain your your force of will is not strong enough yet well being the first time i tried a different technique so it didn't work technique. yeah yeah so um as far as repair goes hey bastion do you want to roll a d100 yeah i can do that as soon as i uh i log in uh-huh uh-huh uh, while he's logging in, I'll, I'll tell the sword to work for me and try to persuade it. Okay, okay. Yeah, you, you yell at this hollow metal tube. Uh, three. Out of a D100? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's an 11. <laughs> okay, same as the first. But, right. Sebastian... <laughs> hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can I get advantage on this? Like I, does I mean? Let me roll for let me roll for Howard Letts. Let me roll for Howard Letts, who's the uh, the gnome artificer on board. I was talking all this shit about. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm the son of God. And then I'll. I literally I'll, have made sentient beings. This is for Esme Hart, who's the other maintenance person, and this is for Orla Finch, who's a computer tech. Okay, so. They don't save it. So what you, um, you guys realize that the damage to the, uh, 
um, like tanks that regulate the pressure in here are more mm. damaged than you previously thought. Um, you are able to fix them, but it's going to take you another like 24 hours. Damn. That's fine. Yeah. I don't need to eat. Yeah, yeah. It's it's fine. You guys just have a delay. And with you guys fixing more welding robots, you'll be able to repair this, but they're going to have to like do some chemistry to create more air to make pressure under the ocean to be able to float and not explode or depressurize or whatever. Um, I'm only kind of sure how submarines work. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you gotta start with the I mean, PS2 controller. Yeah. Yeah, typically the PS2 controller is actually the most integral part, although uh, if nice. you have a PS2 controller, I think it's actually inefficient and you should be getting an off-brand GameCube controller instead. That's I finally worst. got an Xbox Where controller. The I've A button the whole time. is on the left. Oh, the yeah. B button is up at the top. The X button's at the bottom. And then the Y button's on the right. Have y'all heard about the Soldier Boy console? I did. Oh, yeah, no. the Soldier Boy 9000. Mm -hmm. oh, no. It's it's like no. just a, like a cheap Chinese like a counterfeit console that he's rebranded as his own. And sells for like $150. You can get the same thing off Amazon for like 20 and it comes preloaded with all these pirate uh, pirated games. And he was selling it with all the pirated games on there, but just a sticker that says Soldier Boy on it. And um got in a lot of like trouble. The rapper, the rapper Soldier yep. Boy, tried to get into yeah. gaming and is being sued yeah, for would... millions of dollars by Nintendo and everybody else. He deserves that. Yeah? He deserves that. I wouldn't support anything he did. Is he? Like, he was, like I, I hate the, the fact that he, that's even his name. Is he a bad person? No, nah, I mean, he got on there and he, uh, he's sitting there rapping and literally came out in one of his raps talking about fuck the troops. Yikes. Your name is Soldier Boy. Yeah. <laughs> that's... <laughs> My brother in Christ, that's your entire brand, is the yeah. soldiers. He probably got sick of, uh, like, he didn't think about it when it was like, I'm so sick of veterans coming up and talking to me. Dumbass. No, nah, he's, he's not a veteran. <laughs> well, he looked like he's someone who's... Just... I know. I... Yeah. yeah, and he, you know, but, I mean, there were, there were soldiers, like, there were soldiers in Iraq that came back at him, like, made better, uh, diss tracks than any of his rap albums, so... Mm -hmm. <laughs> Like, they made better dispatch about him. Like, with no uh, uh, no equipment, they're in the middle of middle of the field in Iraq, just a cell phone. Uh huh. Somebody yeah. beatboxing in the background. <laughs> no, I mean they put they put together uh, a beat and everything. They like, I mean, they they don't even the need to, they don't even need to add any sort of explosions or gunfire. Yeah, it's already it's in the just, background. It's just already <laughs> there. Fucking yikes. Okay. Well, um, I've learned something new today that Soldier Boy sucks. All right, cool. Um, uh -huh. It doesn't even swallow. I mean, better than DJ Khaled. I mean, that's a low bar. <laughs> uh, but um, day 45, what are you guys doing? As I assume Bastion continues to work. Uh, I'll probably be trying to reach out to people like, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? We're here. Here's what's going on. Do Who do you talk to? Uh, so I'm starting with um, August and our scantily clad little refugee boy whose name escapes me. Oh, Garfield? Garfield. Look, and, he wears uh, a lot of clothes. They're just got awful clothes. I said what I said. Okay. Uh, them <laughs> and um, our, uh, my, my pet warlock necromancer. Dennis? Uh, Dennis yeah, is Dennis. the necromancer. That's it, yeah. So Dennis, August, and Garfield, at the very least, I'm like, hey, here's what's going on. Here's where we're at. Yeah, how how much do you tell them? Because that's going to heavily depend on what they do next. Or uh, heavily decide what they do next. August, I tell everything. Okay. He gets the full information. Garfield just will... gets... Oh, August will send to you also uh, using his own spell slots to get as much information from you as possible. Nice. 
Uh, Garfield just gets, hey, we're working on tech, Bastion's working on fixing it. It's extremely complex, more than uh, anything else in this universe, and you might get to touch it, just be prepared. You hear the lust in his voice as he says, oh my <laughs> gosh! Are you, is it, it's not even my birthday! You don't know when your birthday is. No, I don't, actually. <laughs> yeah, you guys weren't allowed to. Uh, and then Dennis, it's like, hey, listen, we got some stuff that like crosses the lines between magic and uh, science, and I think you're going to want to look at it if you're allowed to when you get here, but don't respond to this in case it sets off like your tracker that blows you up. But we oh, got Dennis cool doesn't have away. the thing that blows him up. That's Ash. All oh, right, but... that's just Ash. Yeah. And Ash, I don't tell him anything. Like, I'll just tell Dennis, like, hey, listen, you can kind of like probably mention this to him that we have stuff going on. But please don't tell him directly because he'll blow up. Are you're you're allowed to message him, and he's a re- he's allowed to reply. Um, that's part of the rules that Henry gave him. Oh, I thought he could use any like unregulated spells whatsoever to respond. No, if Henry doesn't know about the communication before, he can. He's not allowed to respond to anyone else unless it has to do with his children or you guys. Um, that is, I'll, like, I'll so if, and he's allowed to receive messages that won't hurt him, but he has to talk to Henry before he's allowed to reply. And I'll just give him the download, like, hey, here's where we are. We're not dead. We're not injured. Uh, got some crazy tech. August knows more. Talk to him before I get tell you anything. He knows everything. We're totally good. They're just giving me a heads up. Bye, bestie. Says, you just... The amount of... Th- you know, that's why God chose you, is because you just get into really bizarre situations... In and my somehow defense, they this is turn. Fault. No, this is a, a a bewildered compliment, but still a compliment. I'm I'm impressed. Like I'm scared, but I'm impressed. Uh. Oh. <laughs> oh, Ash, you you silly boy. <laughs> Can I just sit down with you and and study your methods of how do you find interdimensional travel in like three days? Yeah. yeah. God, I love. I get to add a new thing to say to freak people out. Hi, I'm, ba- <laughs> Hi, I'm Bastion. Uh, I was the first thing ever created uh, that wasn't the material plane. Um, I build people for a living and put the souls of unborn human or unborn souls in them. And also, I uh, fixed the ship that uh, can travel between dimensions. Good to meet you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of the first people to ever know about it. Yeah. Just hey, Pale, can you, like, is it? Have you have you always been this weird? <laughs> I just used to be like an annoying law Bible thumper, and then I met Leo. <laughs> we blame him mm-hmm. for everything. Yeah, I he literally looked, showed up to a fair. Look, met Leo the Bard, and it, this, it's been less than a year since I've all met him. been downhill. Yeah, I mean. Uh, Vivian and Albal and Kord are considered the chaos gods. They're good-natured chaos gods, luckily for everyone on the planet. But they are the chaos gods. <laughs> and this guy is Zeech. Zeech? Oh, well, he might be from Dimension Alpha. Or another oh, one. Or... Hey, guys, here's uh, the big big boss after the moth. This is the god emperor of mankind. Good luck. Hey, uh, did you notice my poorly rebranded weave instead of the warp? Um, what? The Wandering Albatross is bigger than the uh, Vengeful Spirit, by the way. Um, like Damn. twice the size. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so I, I really can have a big ass seat on here and then some. Yeah, this is the biggest thing ever created, ever conceived. Um, you don't know how big Dimension Alpha is to be able to craft something this large. Presumably it's bigger than your material plane. That or they, you know, made it outside of the plane using metal from asteroids or something. Because they've made many of these ships. But this is the biggest thing anyone's ever seen. It's two miles long. Thunderscrem is only 26 miles diameter. This is the biggest fucking thing anyone's ever seen. It's two miles long and hundreds of stories tall up and down. Like, so two miles of, you know, 50 or 60 to 100 floors 
you cut that apart and spread it out, it's already bigger than, like, half the towns on the planet. I feel like two miles is... Yeah. I feel like the, the ships on in 40k are much bigger. They are not. I only guess. some. They're uh, only, like, two miles? No, no. They're the, smaller. They're smaller. Mm -hmm. Even the they're smaller spirit. than two miles? Yes. Yeah, they're, like, a half a mile or, like, a kilometer. Yeah. That's crazy, because I feel like... You're thinking of like the craft worlds, which are entire planets, the pyramids. No, I yeah, but I like I I know like the the in terms of like the scale of like Blackstone fortresses and the ships are much bigger. But I feel like when they talk about them, like it's like they have fleets. The, the fleets are hundred miles across, but a lot of small ships. Am I, I just under, am I just underselling like a mile? Cause, like Space Marines can yes. sprint at like some fucking like sixty miles an hour, some ridiculous fucking number like that. Yep, they're just fast, but doesn't mean the ships are big. Space Marines can like get full sustenance from cannibalism, so they just eat people and things. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I guess, I guess I'm just not thinking about. I, like that's crazy. Only two miles? Why? Wait, it's it's wild. wild. Like only two miles. It's crazy. I was crazy once. Now, how how long is the vengeful spirit? Let's Google it. Because I did Google it when I was deciding how big yeah, the I... albatross was. An ancient Gloriana class battleship adapted to a variant of the Sila pattern that serves as the flagship of Horus. Uh, give me no, give me the dimensions, you fuck. Rat I might have to add best. size to the. Yeah, let me go find my notes because I. I don't remember if it was... It might even be bigger than two. I don't remember exactly what I said. The vessels were around 20 kilometers in length. 20 km to MI. Yeah, that's 12 miles. Oh. Maybe I got a different source then. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, two miles is not... Well, for Imperial... a material plane that's the size of, like, the... No, the like, I added together I, are the size yeah. of the Tiggy with the United States. I'm not, I'm not saying that, like... Yeah. I'm not saying that this this is small compared to everything in the material plane, but I'm saying for 40k ships. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it I must says, have looked somewhere else. It says Imperial escort vessels are between 75 meters and 3 kilometers. Cruisers are anywhere between 5 and 6, and battleships are 6 to 8. So 6 kilometers is... 3.2 miles. So, yeah, so... Okay, so I guess it is still the site. Yeah. So it's not a battleship, but it's like a cruiser... Okay, yeah. Because I was going to say, the battleships, I don't believe that. Cause I've, <laughs> like, I've... In the books I've read, but... I believe it like a cruise... Yeah. Yeah, oh, hang on. Here, this, is, this is from the Navy Imperialis. Hmm. Navy. I was oh long. yeah, the the wandering albatross is three kilometers or almost two miles long. Yeah, so like that's that's a comparison of the sizes. So yeah, I that makes sense. We got like an escort vessel for forty, which like to be fair, is still fucking massive. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it is. Anyways, nerd rant over. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Um. My mistake. Yeah, but so Pale's reaching out to people. What are you up to, Carolina? Uh, I'm focusing on this book. I really don't have anything else to do. I already raided the armory. Okay. Yeah, make me another uh, insight check. Uh, it's not getting better. That's an 11. <laughs> yeah, it's with the creaking of the ship and the repairs going on and everyone coming um the two like security guys uh john smith and max norton come and like ask you if uh they they can see that you're a fighter type person and so they ask you about like fighting styles and max might even challenge you to a duel because he's you know a cocky dumbass and you're if you if you do you're gonna kick the shit out of him uh and he's a terrible right. learner but it. I will definitely do it. Okay. Yeah. Probably it, both of them at the same time. Yeah, easily, handily, you would absolutely kick their asses. 
Um, and that's what John Smith expected, because he is wise, and um, Max is not, and he gets kind of butthurt about it, but, it, you know, that I'm, I'm John who knows him very well blows him off. What? I'm also frustrated because this blade isn't working for me. So mm. a- after that, a uh, dissatisfying sparring session, I'm going to try to, uh, I'm going to try to, uh, strong arm this thing and make it just come out just because I'm angry. Make an intimidation check. <laughs> 26. Oh my god. <laughs> Your raw rage at not being able to do it, the beam actually does light up, and the color of it is red, matching your entire aesthetic. Mm. I don't think you know the connotation of beam blade colors, and maybe they're different in this universe. Who knows? Um, Absolutely. You've seen uh, King Henry's is purple, but that's the only one you've seen before. Uh, but it's red and it matches your whole deal and you get it to work you eventually start to get a headache or even as you're no longer angry it starts to flicker but for a long time you're able to wave it around in the air do you do anything while you have it uh which one is this is this the single or the double let's say it's the double one okay yes i sit here and spin this thing around like dark mall okay <laughs> Uh, make an acrobatics check. Uh, 13. Okay. Uh, you didn't do bad enough to, like, cut a pipe or anything, and you're new to this weapon, but it still looks and feels very cool. And eventually, as your excitement of getting it to work uh, fades, the the laser sword goes back into itself, but still feels um, oh. hot and kind of vibrating in your hands. Yeah, it is. A little off balance from my double blade, but if I get it to work consistently, it'll do. Yeah, and it's a really weird weapon to hold because the blade itself is weightless, and so you're just holding the tube, and so Uh the the weight is definitely, definitely different than any other weapon you've ever held. Uh, yeah. Yeah, And uh, at that, oh, sorry. What? Darian, you're gone, man. They killed him dead. He stabbed himself with a beam blade. R.I.P. Just like Luke in episode uh, <laughs> four, where he's Whoa! looking the Oh, was that a Star Wars reference? No. How cool! <laughs> I'll see myself out. Like the no, no, time. We'll walk out. Oh, he left. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> Well, uh, it's just you and me, man. I thought I was the one to do the lab to oh, do no, you're, There's Darian. You're back, back. <laughs> what were you saying, man? <laughs> That's why. I don't remember. <laughs> I. That was funny as fuck. <laughs> yeah. He actually left. <laughs> I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. In the couple seconds you were gone? Like tears in the rain. Oh, Speed, is that a Blade Runner 2049 reference? <laughs> yeah, it was! Hell yeah. Uh, I see dumb people. Dumb mm, people? That's me. I did not give the right my, one of my oh, coworkers. Yeah. One of my coworkers actually has a sticker on the back of his truck that says, I see dead people. Well, okay. uh-huh. I mean, you he guys kind of do. It, yeah. Literally. And I've got a sticker on the back of my van that says I break for cemeteries. Like instead of I break for railroad crossings. Yeah. yeah. That's why my neighbors avoid me. Anyway. <laughs> yes. Uh-uh. Uh Bastion, roll another D one hundred. Please God. Hmm. Please God. <laughs> Twenty one. Fuck. Really? Okay. Yeah. Let, let me see if uh the other repair people can help you. Uh, this is for Howard. And, oh, that's a d20. This is for Howard. Okay. And then this is for Orla Finch. And this is for uh, Esme. And 
This is four. Are those for the three? Okay. So, everyone else, it's you, Bastion, are mostly focusing on the robots, which is why yours is going pretty slowly. And the robots are having a lot of issues because they've been in disrepair for like literally 5,000 years. And then um, Esme is finishing up and supervising the robots that are working on the pressure regulation. And then uh, you're not sure where Orla Finch is. It's she's she's doing computer things like more finically, like working on updating the navigation system. You mm -hmm. assume that's what she said. But then Howard Letts finally gets a great deal of the um, other repair robots working and unsticks like a drive shaft or something. And finally, the um, critical system alerts that you've been getting on the terminals and stuff goes away. Now, there are many systems that are still down, but you are finally, finally, uh, on the night, or in the morning of now day 45, you know that this ship can surface. Or it's it's night now is what I said. My bad. Yeah. Nightfall, day 45. You know that the ship is operational for single planar flight. And the crew nice. is ready. And probably... It's, um... It's a fucking name. Uh, Tolivir. Uh, Tolivir and Captain Misplitter are going to... Like, she's done a lot of flight training. They all have. But then Captain Misplitter's done the most. He's had the most time behind a uh, simulator. Because he's never actually flown this ship. Because <laughs> uh, it was, like, stranded uh, before he woke up. But uh, everyone gathers in the cockpit, except for, uh, I would say, the two security people and then the repair folks who are staying down in, like, the engine bay. So Howard and Esme are going to stay down there to make sure, like, if a pipe bursts mid-fucking thing, they'll, they won't be able to do much about it. <laughs> but they're going to try. And they have the, uh, the fleet of robots that are working also standing by down there. Uh, they turn off, like, all non-critical systems, like the lighting in any other floor other than the cockpit. They turn off some of the life support in everywhere but the cockpit. And, um, it occurs to them that, like, since nobody else is in stasis anymore, they can turn all the power off all that shit, too. But you are, you are finally ready to fly the Wandering Albatross, which you could rename the ship also if you wanted to. Um... I believe you were thinking about also renaming the ship's computer because they just address it as computer and it responds to the name computer. And uh, But what do you guys do pre, this isn't the maiden voyage, what do you call, you we know, call the computer long... Cortana. Huh? We call the computer Cortana. Yeah. <laughs> Chat GPT. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, everyone is everyone is getting ready. Assuming you want to fly right now, then. Uh yeah, can we bomb a couple uh, like uh, villain hideouts in the meantime though? Like they would saw you just on the way. <laughs> it's gonna take they several weeks. They didn't want guns us... unstuck. They simply but... didn't want us using this for violence. Yeah, it, if if you wanted to. Uh, do anything other than self-defense, they would not tell you how it worked. You'd have to figure it out on your own. I mean, like not that I explicitly. not that I don't have that. I don't remember them saying don't use this for violence. They, they, they specifically were contacting people. Yeah, they specifically yeah I, I remember that don't yeah. talk to it about people, but like random uh, bolts. Like, okay, if you nuked a like medieval peasant, they'd not be like, oh, I can't believe I've been hit with a nuclear bomb. They'd be like, my god, the wrath of god has come down to smite me. But then yeah, everyone the else who wasn't bombed would come across the wreckage. And, and be like, wow, these guys really pissed off god. I mean, they, in a world where you can ask god, god what happened. Yeah. yeah, but do our gods even know what a nuclear bomb is? You like, assume they got it. Maybe. I mean, because again, it's like the art. The Greek gods didn't know what the fuck, like, calculus was. It's, uh, Pelor knows how nuclear fusion or fission 
whatever, whichever one it is. Fucking Boiling water with he? radiation. Yeah, that's what happened with the whole prison escape. Oh, I thought, wait, I thought we just nuked it. Like, no. There was the... there. Oh, I that's... guess I explained it more in the, the side, like, flavor texts, but that was one of the key things that made Ash Barlow like Merkul's favorite is that he discovered that Golgri had stopped buying coal for the citywide steam engines that run like elevator shafts and stuff mm -hmm. and wow. um, you know mills for grinding grain or whatever and he realized they were boiling water with nuclear material radioactive material and uh, Ash was the first person to go hey we shouldn't blow that up because Stephen Puyo said it's bad to kill people if it's not the apocalypse. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's how he got, like, famous. And that's how Jean had the plans to blow up that, is because she stole it from Ash's office. And, um... So, yeah, they... It's mm -hmm. extremely primitive nuclear power, but they boil water with hot, hot metal. Mm -hmm. That's hot all by itself. And yeah, I was listening to those. It was on... I listened to... For some reason, they came on backwards, uh, so I listened to part three, and then part two. Oh. Cool. Um. Yeah. Yeah. But so that's what happened was when the radiation leak happened in the prison, is that Gene used controlled water to pick up the radioactive material core and shoved it back up the, uh, like, water flow pipe. And so it kind of exploded, and because <laughs> she was trying to blow up the town, but um, and kill That's all cheap. one million people who live there and poison half the continent. Uh, so killing oh. two million people in a week. Um, it's fantasy Chernobyl the numbers. Yeah, because they yeah. kidnapped my dad, and so I'm going to destroy them. That was her deal. Fair enough. <laughs> so. I'll I'll stick around with the uh, um, mechanic to see if there's anything I can do to help if something goes wrong. Yeah. And you stay in the lower the lower bays. Um, yeah. And I assume the other two of you are in the cockpit? Yep. Everybody make me a history check or if you want to just be prey, because the history check would be if you can help them look at numbers and dials and tell what they mean to help them fly the ship um, or religion or persuasion. If you just wanted to be moral support, uh, you can choose in what way you're helping as long as you tell me what it is. 16 what for is history. It? What are the choices again? It's history or what? History, persuasion or religion. Well, easy. Yeah. Uh, can I do perception to help the mechanic? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can look at, um, make sure the, the pressure gauges or whatever are, are all doing right. Uh, 31. Oh, okay. On his 25. Nice. Yeah, so it's Carolina, you're down in the engine bay with uh, Howard and Esme, and you're down with the, the Legion of Robots, and you spot that something is leaking with, like, the the aether fuel they use to um it's it's not the aether engines which are a different kind of fuel but it they just collect latent power in the universe if they could explain it to you more i could you know whatever but you're able to spot that something's about to blow and so they dispatch robots to go like turn some uh the the wheel things on pipes to move it around uh yeah you see keep things from exploding and then Bastion, you are able to, uh, they were about to do some math incorrectly on the navigation, and uh, so you spot a, a last minute problem, remembering back to uh, things that you kind of jerry-rigged to make the thing able to fly, and you're like, no wait, the ship's not being normal right now, That's we're going to have to do different math, and they go, oh fuck, you're right, and Pale, you're sitting there, and you are remembering, because you've been the one to cast, like, god, what's it called, Windwalk, you know where the uh, like air streams are going and everything and so wow. as they break the surface of the water and this ship when it starts for the first time in 5,000 years this shit is loud you feel like you're gonna go deaf even through the 
dozens of feet of steel separating you from everything. Uh, those of you down in like the engine bays or whatever, it you're you know that if something explodes, you'll be obliterated because of the sheer amount of power and forces being uh, churned out right now as propellers that haven't worked in, again, 5,000 years and are crusted in barnacles or whatever, churn the life of a ship that's uh, roughly six or 7,000 years old, depending on the uh, time differences, Dimension Alpha and Dimension 47. And uh, everything is shaking, everything is quaking, the crew, uh, who the only one who has seen this ship fly before is Oe Figura, the medic. She's been on the ship since the crash, but doesn't remember much. So it's been 5,000 years since she's flown, even though she's been on the ship the whole time, uh, taking turns sleeping. But everyone's very alarmed to fly something they've never flown before. This is the first mechanical vehicle ever moved, uh, unless you count, like, the apparatus of Kowalsh or whatever. And so as you enter the air and break the water surface, which feels like you've hit concrete in a car, you almost fall out of your seat onto the floor, mm -hmm. but you eventually rise into the air. And though you're inside this time, Bastion, you know this is the exact vision that Gon showed you real life like a year ago of a massive ship rising from the water and into the sky. And uh, a bunch of the dials go crazy again as you suddenly change from water to air but the ship churns different parts of the machinery, machinery back to life. And you start to ascend, going up into the atmosphere. You went from a billion pounds per square inch under the ocean to like negative a billion pounds as you move the biggest thing that's ever been moved up into the sky, very far away, where no one can see you, unless they have really good elf eyes. Congratulations! And everyone claps, and a few people cry. Uh, there was much rejoicing. There was much rejoicing. We're not dead. We're not dead. Oh my god, we're not dead. We're not dead. I feel like we should be dead. They they I all agree with you. Dead. They all agree with you. They all agree with you. You just have to. You just go <laughs> fixing things. Um, everything. Hey, Pat, you remember to set it to Wumbo, right? Huh? <laughs> you you set it to Wumbo, right? Oh god, we're all gonna die. Bastion's just gonna stare at you for a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Captain Miss Glitter goes into uh, a, a far off part of the ship, and like a part of the ship no one's been to, even before. And he reveals that he stowed away several bottles of uh, ethanol, nice. you know, liquor. Says I've been saving this for a special occasion, but then we never had the occasion, because you know. We all got controlled by an Abelith, and so everyone uh, immediately, as the as the ship goes into autopilot, they all get drunk. <laughs> I, was, I was just getting ready to say, like, can we really be drinking and flying? No, the computer's got it, as long as we're just flying in a straight direction. Uh-huh. Uh I mean, they don't get, like, shit face. Yeah. But it's the, the first alcohol. They're not going to waste a bunch of alcohol on the ship. It's for party purposes only. More yeah. And even though they aren't wasted, they're just drinking enough to have celebrated. A lot of them just lay on the floor in the cockpit. <laughs> or really, a lot of them haven't seen the sky in decades. And so they take turns laying on the floor and then just staring out the window. Uh, a lot of them weren't, haven't even ever seen this dimension because they were unconscious when they got here, and the only part of this dimension they've seen is under the ocean in their wasting away ship. And so it's that scene from the Matrix when they see the sky for the first time. Even though now we're wasting away in Margaritaville? Yeah. Wasting away again in Margaritaville. Can Bastion, mm. uh, can Bastion bartend? <laughs> sure. I'm not just an artificer, I'm a mixologist too. Yeah. You do chemistry back there to it's, like. <laughs> I'm cooking. I'm cooking some shit up. I might be. So I might be in a food and water. I've got like four uses of that. Yeah, I may, yeah. I may be an armorer, but I I minored in alchemy. Yeah. It's you. You reverse engineer pina coladas with Pale's help of create food and water. Fuck uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and yeah, I'd say Orla Finch goes in. Or uh, she goes to Tabitha Craig who 
I'm pretty sure has not spoken a word to you guys because she d does not like to talk, even though she can. She's the archivist. But she tells Tabitha to pull up audio files, and she pulls up Margaritaville, and they play, uh, you know, because they're on a boat, they listen to boat songs. I'm on a motherfucking boat. I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. On An interdimensional research hard, boat. Take a good hard look at the motherfucking boat. Yeah. But what do you guys do other than celebrate that the ship didn't explode? I'm on a boat, motherfucker. Take a look at me. Uh, once I see that everything is turned down low, I go back up to the uh, uh, to the cockpit where everybody else is, mm -hmm. have some drinks, and you know, uh, place place the uh, light blades in a place where they're not going. I'm not going to accidentally ignite them. <laughs> good call. Good call. I mean, it takes a lot of focus, but yeah. It, it didn't take a lot of focus. It took a lot of anger. The true, right? Well, I think yeah. about it. Yeah, and now I'm drinking, so I have I'm losing control of the function. You put it in a cup holder <laughs> on the dashboard. I just throw it in uh, in my quiver. Yeah, that too. Uh, but you fly and fly, and. Flying is not as impressive now that we have wings, though. But you're moving a two-mile-long ship through the air. You've never, flown this, you've never flown this high before. It's You're flying so far high in the upper atmosphere that you'll be able to see, you know, the stars, even though it's daytime. The, the sun is very small and very close to the world because uh -huh. it just is created anew every single fucking day. And so you can actually see angles of it that you're pretty sure nobody's ever seen before. Oh, we, you're saying we can see Power's ass? I mean, that'd be the moon, but... Well, it sounds like you're saying angles are... Oh, so we're just seeing Power's putting berries. I mean, like... There's probably a lesser spirit who's not the not a god, but like they're the one in charge of the moon. Um... But, um, followers, bigger berries. I mean, like, I feel like it'd be like a singular berry. Oh, huh. I'm gonna okay. choose not to think about that. Or just his I'm... finger poking the atmosphere nope. from the celestial plane. Uh, that's what he's poking. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, what happens I'll when it rains in your imagination of twig and berries? I don't like you brought it up, anymore. you get to suffer. Yep. <laughs> yep, fair enough. That's on me. <laughs> I hate that deeply. Thank oh, you. me now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the moon's just the bottom of the cum jar. Oh. Uh, uh, that's horrible. horrible. <laughs> I'm not ready for that. Why is there a Fluttershy on the moon? Oh. oh God. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. It's, uh... Uh, uh, Carolina, roll me a D100 for day one of your flight to see if anything interesting happens. Oh, D100. Uh, 42. During this day, you have some minor system hiccups, like the fuel's not flowing correctly, or um, the like ignition sensors are going out or something. But it's all uh, stuff that, after a bit of panic, you guys are able to repair. And like with working on the ship, the work on the robots doesn't go nearly as smoothly. But it, you're not, you're not going to crash. But it is a little bit stressful of a day as you're keeping the ship in the air. Okay. Does anybody do anything? Oh, that's bad. That's bad. Oh, sorry. All right, I got out of a touch and he's like, "We can play like this loud." I don't have any fucking idea what you're saying, man. Is he gone again for you guys? Oh, he's muted. Yeah, they shot him dead. They shot him again. Again. <laughs> he got better, and then he died again. Yeah. R.I.P. my mans. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Yeah, it's rough. <sighs> well, what are the other two of you doing while Darian's having problems? Oh, Darian I'm unmuted himself. Problem. I'm not having problems. I said it's loud out here, so I'm muting myself. 
Uh, okay. But do you guys do anything fun on the ship while there's there's small emergencies, but some emergencies? I mean, I'm just going wherever it's like, hey, there's a lot of heat here. It's dangerous, like, I'm resistant. So if there's like overheating, things like that, I'm there. That's where I'm going. Yeah, it's Esme and Howard can teach you how to weld. Perfect. Yeah, I'm just like, all right, <laughs> going. Boom, boom. Club, another yeah. club, bus. There's there's a spot where like a steam pipe breaks and you're able to shut it off without burning your skin off. And they, they wouldn't have had time to don a, a heat suit or something. So, yeah. Hell yeah. How about you, Bastion? Um, are all the robots fixed yet? Not all of them. Um, here, go ahead and roll me a, a D100 to see how many robots are fixed. This is a crit. This is a crit. Nope. It's a fucking 24. So 24% of the 917 are fixed. God. Whatever Damn it. fucking number that is. <laughs> um. This is why I have kids. Yeah, but those those twenty four percent can help me fix the rest, right? Some of them can. Uh, some of them are like almost. What's the? Because I would say they're not like Chat GPT smart. That would be the the ship computer is probably that smart. Mm -hmm. But then the rest of them are. Yeah, they. they a lot. A lot of them. They aren't all repair bots. Some are just cleaning ones. Some are, um, like, security. Uh, there are right. some that are supposed to, like, you know, clean filters. It's, I'd say probably, like, a third of them are repair bots. So those ones can help fix. It's They are, they are a helping, um, the ones that are able to. But they're also themselves, you know, fixing their own broken down... Like, you get them working, but then they have to fix themselves, and then the ship, and then each other, and... It's a lot of work, but they're working on it. Wait. Yeah, I think I just genuinely just spend my time fixing them, still. Okay. I need these, bo I need these boys up and running so I can put souls into them. <laughs> then, uh, uh, Darian, how about you? Anything special? It's got an unmuted. We lost him again. Lost him again? Man, God, keep yeah, him. They keep, keep shooting. fucking shooting him! Well, I'm not Why? Still okay. Uh, and then either Ian or Matt, would you like to roll the next T100? I yeah. am currently AFK, so... Okay. I'll do it. Alright. I'm doing 90, 91. Hell, Hell yeah, yeah done, brother. Roll me Fuck another... Me. Roll me Why another... I fixed all the robots? Roll me a D20. <laughs> Fuck your robots, Is this that's a why. Skill check? Roll me, roll me two D twenties. It's not a skill check. Uh, a natural twenty and a twelve. That is. Damn. Add that to the percent of the nine hundred and seventeen robots that are fixed. Fuck yeah! Let's go, baby. So that's thirty-two yeah, plus see. twenty-four is fifty-six. So fifty-six percent of the robots are working. Hell yeah! Nice, 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 nice. But fucking banana bread, dude. It worked, dude. What? Animal. Yeah. Yeah. I got some fucking banana bread at work today, dude. Is and that a meme? I, yes. Oh, a okay. meme that I quoted so many times that my girlfriend has banned me from doing it because <laughs> I did it so consistently. I was like literally doing it daily. Skunks, dude? Have you I ever know, actually brought no. banana bread to work? No, but I've made it at home because my coworkers mm -hmm. don't serve it as previously discussed. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. The fucking cubs? I'm telling you, man, if you want to come play with corpses, like... Don't tempt me. I'm good. Yeah, okay. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna post the video of your viewing pleasure. Okay, it's I'll so probably view funny. it later. Yeah. It's this guy just hanging out in his work truck. Eating. Just going to ham on some banana bread. <laughs> dude, I got some fucking banana bread at work today, dude. My mom said that good thing from the place yeah. you ate. Like, when I say that, again, memorized, and I was uh -huh. Oh my god. I've, no, that's completely... F I have I have things where it's like, you'll ask me to, like... Hey, well, like, what do you have that you remember and I don't? And then someone will say something, and it's immediate... It's like a, like a, like a sleeper agent kill phrase. 
Oh, hey, I, I can quote Ian's the whole thing. MK Ultra. You guys yeah. gave that to me with the crazy, the rats made me crazy, because my coworker, one of them, he responds, that's crazy, like, sarcastically to pretty much anything anyone says. Mm -hmm. Or um, if someone's talking about, like, somebody on day shift was, like, mad at us or wanted us to do something different, and he was like, that's crazy. Yeah. And I go immediately, I was crazy once. And mm -hmm. I keep it to myself, you know? Yeah, but it's it literally it every time, and he says it like ten times a day, and I've never heard that meme other than you guys saying it. <laughs> oh, I get on reels all the time. Yeah. I I I make my friends say it all the time. I was gonna say though, speaking of your coworkers, um, Craig, cut this out. Mm -hmm. Anyways, science and uh. No, you're you're good. The, uh, who rolled the last? I did. It was you did. Okay, so uh, yeah. Pale, you're the last one left for your last day of the journey. Yeah, how do things go when we pass the cold line, Matt? Matt. Whoops, I didn't realize I was muted. I am currently away from our computer. Can I use like a Google roller? Uh, yeah, whatever. Roll d100. Roll. That's a. D6. God damn it. See, one of us could also roll for you. Yeah, please, one of you guys roll for me. I'm sorry. I got, got it. I got it. I got it. I got okay. it. Okay. Uh, natural one. Uh, <laughs> why okay. did I let you Wasn't my anything? role, it was Matt's. Wasn't uh -huh. my role. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. That's on me. As yep. you guys pass the cold line, Really, it happens whenever you are getting close to entering Thunderscrim airspace. Um, you see that the entire Thunderscrim military and half of the citizens have mobilized. It's because you're as you're going over the town, you can see the firelights of like their watchtowers and like the city streets, and it's like when you're you're starting your descent. And then you see every fucking light in town turn on. Um, you see every watchtower light turn on. And then through the computer systems and your eyeballs, you see two um, actually familiar dragons. Massive. Ancient. Oh no. One green and one red. Or rather, one emerald and one red. You also, flanked by them, are... Uh, the Thunderscrim Air Force, which is actually dozens of soldiers on dozens of trained wyverns that all have, like, and then also, you know, flying brooms and flying carpets that have uh, daisy chain shape charges and are, are flying toward you. And it, as we've discussed the, the size and scale of this ship, uh, you have never seen more dropped jaws further in, in your whole life. But as these forces approach you, because, you know, it's not just Golgory. It's, they've been prepared for Golgory counter-invasion for months, Vecna-level invasion for years. Once every five or ten years, dragons or, like, armies of drow try to invade them. So, like, they're ready for something fucking massive. They probably assume it's Golgory. So, um, yeah, two familiar dragons and wyverns with bombs are approaching. What do you do? Um, can we, like, full stop the ship at, like, a respectable <laughs> distance and then just the three of us walk out? Uh, yeah. Everybody make me um, the same rules you rolled for when you did the ascent. Either history, religion, or persuasion uh, to see how you help the crew slam on the brakes. Because I don't know if you've ever tried to stop something that's two miles long. Uh, 21. Okay. That is a 16. Okay. I think they shot Darian. Yeah, is again? he still dead? Yeah, again. Darian, man. Are you alright? It's my best friend. The, the dragon that was in my brain. Mm. 16. Yeah. A 16. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you guys run to help everyone shut off the the, um, there's a name for engines that go forward and there's names for engines that go up and down and I can't for the life of me fucking remember what they are but they are in fact distinct um, but you shut off 
the correct engines and they see the ship starting to slow. And uh, luckily, uh, being that she was your friend and inside your head, uh, friend's a strong word, but the- That's a prisoner. Odcotamate <laughs> uh, well, word. Odd lands on the flat part of the ship and sends out a psychic beam to all of you. But the, yeah, and everyone who's been controlled by an Abelith uh, screams as she so much as touches them, but just, she she asks, what is the intention? Who are you? Hi, Akadamit, we found this. This girl was good. Yo, yeah, you you're not in my brain. You willingly let her telepathically communicate with you? Yeah. Oh, with me, a hundo P. <laughs> I, 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 in my head, I'm visualizing a thing of like Bastion, like waving, being like, "Hi, we found this," and visualizing the big ship, <laughs> be like, "We fixed it. This is ours." Yeah, yeah well, sort of like Rapper thing, like his homeboy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> God. Girl, what's good? You're not invading people's minds anymore, but well, in an okay way though. So it's okay. Can't be talking like that, white baby. Oh yeah, as the as the ship is hovering, Adkadamit and uh, Emborium land on the deck, and so do several of the other Thunderscram Air Force. You see people like through the massive um, cockpit window. It's still covered in like ocean scum, but a lot of it's fallen mm-hmm. off. And they're talking into stones of far speech, and there's there's still a lot of movement far far below you. But Adkadamit has a, a long pause and goes. You know, we should have known it was you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Probably, honestly. I mean, you. If it was anyone else, history. this wouldn't be a fight. Yeah, yeah you'd kill them really hard. Mm-mm. No, no. Th- this ship's really hard to. Like, this is kind of a game changer. Yeah, she. She taps her emerald nails on the, uh, the hull and kind of nods. She's excited, bro. Leave him alone. <laughs> Fair um, enough. Fair I'm enough. smart, not wise, or good at talking. <laughs> Eventually, Bastion, from the Stone of Far Speech that you have to King Henry, you you hear him calling you. Hi, King Henry. What's what's going on? You guys need to take a vacation. You you you've just yeah, we did. You've just got to stop bringing me earth-shattering shit like this every time you leave and come back i i just need you to stop doing whack shit for like like a single day or a week or like like a month more, more like just just stop well, doing weird shit for like a month well and... like by do, well by doing this like you can take it now because your heart's not going to give out because i made you a new one <laughs> yeah like you can you can you it can physically just... handle the stress now just it's let me hilarious. let me get a handle on the ten other motherfucking world upturning things I have on my like I'm begging you to stop bringing me this shit so, until I narrow down the to do list like well yeah but like <laughs> no this is fine so, just th- anything so, else other than this uh, <laughs> oh well, you're about. really not, you're really not gonna like what this is then you're oh. not gonna like what else we found this is the um, bone huh. No, this is one of them. Yeah, if you could land. Where? This is the boat. This is the. You talked about this where you wanted the Forgeborn to live. Um. Oh, I talked about making one. We found this one. And then, yeah, Agath mentioned you. You guys found a boat yeah. and that you'd tell me about it. Um. Yeah. It's the boat. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is. Well, this is one of them. If you could land yeah. it like five miles from the town gate, that'd be great. Mm, we'll yeah. do our best. I yeah. know that's a long walk, but I need it to be like over there. We we can fly, remember? Oh, um, we have guests. Yeah. From where? Oh, another dimension. If you could leave them behind and come fucking talk to me first. Uh. Be fine. Yeah. Are they gonna be fine on that boat? Yeah, probably. They were fine for the past 4,000 years. So they should be good for another, you know, couple hours. There's dead air on his end of the line because he can't even (laughs) sigh right now. (laughs) 
you you get the the psychic image of him just holding the rock to his forehead. Please, please come fucking here. Fox. now, please. Yeah, sure. Yep. Okay. You guys approach the castle gate. Fly. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> if you tell the crew like, hey, we're gonna go talk to. You know, the guy that we're friends with, with the whole war we mentioned earlier, that whole thing. They'd be like, okay. Um, they're just still staring out of the windows. They haven't seen snow and or oxygen in 5,000 years. Much less wyverns and dragons and an entire army. Um, yeah, and people. I waved to Arkham in it. Yeah, yeah can, she... we, can we, like, wave down? <laughs> As we're, like, flying, we, like, wave down to people. Yeah, no, I wave um, at the dragons. She she nods to you, Carolina, uh, remembering yeah. you guys fucking murdering her. Yeah. Um, we didn't kill her. You you sure did. I did. I you know, her sure. we killed her. I did. Uh, you you may remember that Emborium, uh, the price of Pale's father, was uh, Akadamit's soul, and he mentioned that he was probably going to go to Tiamat in Hell to have Akadamit resurrected. And now she is. Yeah. They'll probably tell you that story later. But the uh the the two dragons and a lot of the wyverns go back to their their posts, you assume. Yeah, the it, even here closer to like when you exit the ship and fly, you can tell there are people with scopes and binoculars looking at you. You're either infamous or famous in this city, depending on who you ask. Mm -hmm. But the uh there's every all 850,000 people in this town um, are paying attention. And here near the gate, even you see that King James, Agath, Lord Yeagerin are all standing nearby. And King James is holding a glowing basketball sized green orb that you've seen in Agath's lab before. Every long range gun in the country is still pointed at the wall of the ship, even though everyone is um, standing down as you've had permission to land. And they've turned off all the alarms. But um, nobody's taking a nap anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's everyone's just kind of standing by for good God. What is that? Oopsie. Yeah, because because you're you're um, you're friends of the king. But this is so big that being the friend of the king doesn't mean much. Uh, according to the, the thousands of panicked people. Uh, but I'd August like to and Victor... my oopsie. What? I'd like to re-up my oopsie-daisy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Victor doesn't even talk to you. He walks behind you guys, and you notice that his gun is on fire and not safe. Oh. But, yeah, King James and August are going to keep standing near... near-ish to the ship with the green orb and they nod to you as you go in wider eyes than you've ever seen on on anyone um yeah but they welcome you into the castle and they're actually in the throne room for once this looks like the uh or no not in the throne room they're in like the panic room i guess <laughs> or not even that it's like a not quite a war room either there's like a big map of Thunderscrim in here and dozens upon dozens of stones of Farch Teach set into the wall. You assume that they all go to guard posts or um, like military sergeants or whatever. This is the room they go when there's an invasion and they're still just in here. King Henry looks fucking horrible. <laughs> uh, he looks like a wet, uh, you know, newborn kitten and uh, is shaking even sitting down. He has that altered, what is it? alchemy jug that makes oxygen instead that's like on his mask and he's sitting in a chair and not even wearing armor which is this is one of the maybe two times he hasn't worn armor in the last like year queen marceline is actually the one like sitting at attention like she's the one who's going to be talking to you because king henry probably can't and um or barely barely can anyway but there's generals in here there's police captains in here and they yeah, they don't even say anything. Queen Marceline just motions for you to explain. Let's see. Yeah, so we found this. 
in the ocean. What uh, is it? Oh, it's a ship from another dimension that crash landed here about 4,000 years ago, uh, with most of the crew dying in the crash. But there's about 10 or so who are alive. The hull of it is reinforced. It makes it about resistant and or immune to pretty much every form of damage, including force damage, uh, multiple times over. Uh, it's completely airtight, so it could go underwater and uh, above the sky and the atmosphere. It has weapons capable of leveling cities, as well, both on board as well as uh, able to be fired from the ship. There's a bunch of really highly technologically advanced weapons in the ship that we have access to now. We have a tenuous alliance with the current crew, who, again, are from another dimension because we saved them from a mind-eating parasite by killing it and then bringing them back from the dead. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Yeah, sounds about right. Oh, and their universe might have already been eaten. I'm not sure yet. Oh, yeah, they yeah, so they've been here for about 4,000 years. Um, I think I mentioned that, but yeah, they don't know about the Maw, but they might have might be gone already, but they're super cool helping us fight it. Um, they're on our side. Super chill. Also, there's overall, only 10 but... of them, and their computer has access to pretty much all the information, so um, if they weren't, it wouldn't really be a problem. Oh, oh also... Is what Bailey is is August in the room? He is. No, he's um he's outside still. Okay, never mind. You but... assume supervising whatever the orb um mm -hmm. that King James can power. Got uh but yeah. Any questions? So, how did you find out this was here? I oh I has it gone. Things. You just asked him, hey, where's a big boat from a different dimension? No. Uh, what was it? I know I had to make a religion. You, I think you, had, you had a vision of, you tried to see the other gods. Yeah, and, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, three, so I, three were content, 12 were in a term of torture. Yeah, so I was trying to think about, like, other universes and stuff. And I was trying to think about, like other gons and i made kind of a prayer to him of like hey you know help me out here you know we're kind of fighting a multi-dimensional being who's gonna eat you know the whole thing and i guess i i i guess he's been real happy with what i've been doing lately because he just was like hey man go right here and then just go as far underground as, or as far as under the water as you can and then we found this and then we got it working in like two days and it's uh yeah oh also there's enough bodies for all the forge born to be born and it's big enough to house all of them so there's no worries about having to find a place from here what are you planning to do with it um well it's a big mobile fortress that has effectively unlimited sources of energy is impervious to all forms of damage that people on this plane of existence could feasibly do and has weapons capable of fighting back against anything on this. So I think just kind of keep it around as like a big stick to ward people away. They don't and really want other people. You guys, we're beholden to King Henry. Yeah, we've got a pretty good alliance with him. We already kind of talked about like getting uh, a sort of like maybe alliance between me and the for uh, like the Forgeborn and uh, Thunderscrim. Uh, so like, yeah, we're we're cool. And Henry, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we, um, they've gotten that, um, draft for your guys' constitution, like, halfway written up. I'll have them do that faster. Yeah, um, that'd be cool. Yeah, because we're about to have about a thousand more, uh, civilians. Okay. Uh, Orchborn. Yeah, I just got a... There's a guy on there who's really good at working with automatons um, and all the Forgeborn bodies just got to be modified a little bit. Um, and then I can put the soul crystals in there and then everything's cool. And we're going to have about a thousand more Forgeborn. As uh, long as you pinky promise to do the walk softly carry a big stick thing, it's... Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, we're not... Do you really think we'd use this for, like, extreme and unnecessary violence? Come on, now. <laughs> He's not going to answer that question. We're not monsters. Yeah. 
ages, people say the same thing about us, man. Well, I guess yeah, that's why you. Sh that's why if they say that you kill them. Yeah. You um, do that. So about alternate dimension people. Uh, yeah. How are they alive on a ship for four thousand fucking years? Oh, they were able to put themselves into some sort of stasis. Uh, or at least one of them was. I think the rest of the pods broke uh, after about four thousand years. But uh, about ten of them uh, got that mind parasite that we talked about. Uh, but that kind of kind of messed them up a little bit. But it kept them alive. Like a mind so, flare? Goblin. No, it was like a big worm. I I gotta be honest. We didn't really think too hard about it. We just kind of beat it to death. Um, That's fair. Yeah. Tentacles. Yeah, mind control. I think, although it didn't it didn't really do anything to us. Nah, I was just being a squishy. Yeah, it's fun to fight. Okay. Um. Well, and she motions to Henry, and he uh, kind of shrugs at her, and he's like, "So, like, can she would ask you to tell them, like, at least cursory knowledge about their their dimension?" Says, so like, you know, can they still talk to them? It's their their first priority is opsec, not uh, not anthropology. I would say is mostly of they're trying to figure out or... if they're in danger. A thunderstorm, mm -hmm. like they they want to make sure that um, you know this ship isn't just secretly doing recon and tricking you and um, you know if they invite these people in, are they going to be invaded by creatures far stronger than? anything this dimension knows oh i don't really think that that would be like a problem um most of them are scientists one of them's a couple of them are pretty big fans of their version of our religions i guess yeah uh, things are um, a little like a lot of them are these things called goblins which are like big not very monstrous looking goblins um, um i think the you know the danger that you would be afraid of lies in the ship itself but they're not capable of it and we know how to get in the ship so uh, they, yeah, they can't like, keep this up yeah it's it's fairly complicated to kind of try to figure out how it works <sighs> it's not so too it's, bad um, and they've been stranded here not sent like they're people from their dimension aren't coming they were sent here, a, they were they were sent here 4000 years ago to kind of just scout out how civilization was progressing but that was 4000 years ago and their ship totally lost power and an ability to contact the other dimension which might again might I remind you gone so it could be destroyed okay yeah so i really think that this is about uh, a bunch of people who are just scientists who got stranded here um, with a weapon capable of mass destruction. And what is that weapon, by the way? Oh, it's the ship itself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you could have, like, a bunch of red dragon, like, ancient ones fight it, and it probably would walk away completely fine. Okay. Um. Yeah. And I will say, so that's, that's if it's not also shooting at them. There are a lot of weapons on that thing. Bye. Yeah. Bye, Matt. Yeah. Bye, he Matt. Says, uh, he would then uh, uh, eventually, uh, upon uh, yeah, I, I think eventually, other than them being afraid of the ship, they would eventually want to talk to these goblin. It's mm -hmm. uh, first of all, they're going to keep them away from uh, King Henry and Marceline, just in case they're like secretly yeah. assassins or something. They're worried that they're lying to you guys, not that you guys are lying to them. Uh -huh. uh, right. Is and King so, Henry like, in the room? Uh, currently, yes. Uh, I pull out the uh, the single light blade and cross it over to him. Got that from the ship. He catches it and um like tilts it in his hand and turns it on and it's white he's like interesting oh yeah and they have like these 
I, could I have like just a laser pistol? Yeah, yeah. He's not gonna shoot yeah. it, knowing that it's a gun. But he's no, like, I'd like I'd like to shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> just like at just like at the floor. Yeah, um, it's gonna burn a hole in the floor. That's fine. But, okay. I I pull out the double bladed one and I looked at him like maybe you can show me how to efficient efficiently use this. I can get it to light up, but only when I actually need to use it. Uh yeah, when I get to where I can stand up without passing out, uh, sure. But then he would take the one that he touched earlier and set it back down. Oh, that's yours. Oh, you want to have this That's yours yours now. Oh. Well, thanks. But, um, yeah, I don't know if I'll use it, to be honest. Um. Well, if you decide to use it, then you have two. I feel two blades are better than one. Yeah. But at at, at any rate, um, forgot what I was. So there's, they have Dane in their dimension, huh? And they have Gond, apparently. Something like that. Or had, I guess, depending on if their thing is still there or. You think it's eaten by the Maw or something else? Mm hmm. Okay. um, I'll play the Maw. Well, since they are scientists, I think the first order of business is probably sending our scientists. um, And they've they've got somebody who's a. uh, I don't know (laughs) what their title would be, but uh, eventually they get a a crew of people together to like have medical personnel check them over for you guys. They eventually figure out that, yeah, Abelith possession um, is is uh, once the Abelith is dead, you're going to be fine, but they're Thunder Scrummians. They're still going to check them over. Um, they're going to, like how Televir talked about, of give them vaccines to the diseases they've invented vaccines for. Because they've only uh-huh. done it for like four or five. Um, they're going to make sure that the uh, Dimension Alpha folks aren't carrying some like toxic alien mold or something. Like people enter their ship wearing hazmat suits. And then they they make sure they have everything they need uh, to stay on the the ship for a few days. They're they're checking to make sure Dimension Alpha people can like eat Dimension Forty Seven food and drink Dimension Forty Seven water right. and breathe they, Dimension Forty Seven air. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, the Dimension Alpha folks did tests for that before they even came here, but they they double check in case anything's changed in the last five thousand years, and. King Henry would, at, at long length, talk to you guys about, um, or occasionally write down things and have Marceline say, because he can't really talk right now. And she is trying to take over for stuff, even though this is world-shattering fucking news. Uh, but he would recommend that they stay on, or at least very close to the ship for now, but only because it is the safest place on Earth, apparently. Because yeah. as soon as this news reaches Golgari or several other particularly aggressive countries and organizations, wizards and warlords are going to try to flock to steel tech or kidnap these people for study. And Thunderscrim would also like to know more about them, but no one but Vic is going to press for more than you guys are willing to share, especially since you've already made agreements with Thunderscrim and everything. With your permission... Bastion, they're going to assign about a thousand guards on rotation, so 300 at any time, to guard the ship. Um, outside or inside? You, whatever you'll allow. Uh, outside. Okay. Yeah, and um, this number will likely change when the army heads south, but keeping this tech, weapons, and knowledge out of enemy hands benefits Thunderscrim just as much as you and the crew and the robots and the Forgeborn and everything. And they're unenthusiastic about staying in the ship they've been trapped in for centuries, but like the guards will assist them going on the deck, and like they'll have snipers as they like you know stand <laughs> in the sun and yeah. throw snowballs or whatever. But um, you know, once the world gets over the panic of discovering alternate dimensions and aliens, they're they're you know they're not arrested right now. But they're just informed, you will be almost instantly kidnapped. Please stay here for our sake and yours. Yeah. It's like witness protection. And they're happy to resupply the ship with food and beds that aren't 5,000 years old and um, stuff like that. 
but uh, that would be the the thing for now. And um, yeah, <laughs> there's something else I was gonna say, but I forgot what it was. Um, we can get those cryo pad, uh, cryo beds. What do you mean? The stasis pods that they had. See if we can, uh, you know. Fix them, reverse engineer them, something. Yeah, it's um, uh, Howard and Esme, and probably also Orla could show you how they worked. Um, in between breaks of working on the ship and just being happy that they're alive and on the surface. But over the next few days of whatever you guys do next, because I'm planning on soon, if not immediately. Because I don't know how fast you guys want to do other subplots we have. I do want to ensure that we get you those those 30 days of um, being on vacation. So. Yeah. Oh, our beach days? Yeah. yeah, that I promised I mean, you. The <laughs> I, I think that we just pause here and then wait for Matt. Yeah. Yeah, unless there's anything you guys want to do um, last minute. Uh, but do start planning on what you want to do for your 30 days because barring, I think the only pressing thing other than getting stuff ready with our spy organizations and then the Forgeborn and then I'm pretty sure Matt's chomping at the bit to go talk to those beholders I'm pretty sure yeah. we don't have any like things we need to do right this second mm -hmm. and I planned mm -hmm. on us not having things to do right this second but then you happen to pray to God in an alternate dimension and now here we are <laughs> Whoopsies! Can you retend <laughs> the list of like activities we could do, or are those already yeah, picked yeah. out? What? Never mind. I I found them. Oh, okay. I know they're way yeah. high up in the Discord chat, but oh, yeah, I I sent in the chat. Uh, I had Chat GPT uh, pull up a prayer for uh, the Vivian and then write it in uh, Celestial. Oh, fun. <laughs> So that's on there. I don't Can know if your even voice... pronounce Celestial? I don't know. I don't know if your voice, uh, okay. your little voice could, could say it. Wait, what voice could say it? Like, uh, well, I know on my chat GPT, it can actually read it. But, oh, okay. Uh, if you've got like a voice thing that could, could read it out loud or whatever uh, for that prayer. I mean, I could uh, fucking sound it out. But... I mean, it's translated <laughs> too, so. Yeah, yeah. That's fun. I had it doing it. I had it doing in High Valyrian too, the language in, in Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, <laughs> do it in yeah. uh, Lord of the Rings Elvish. Oh yeah, I'm not an elf. Uh, so, well, yeah. you know. You know, it's like uh, my my character's kind of along the lines of uh, fighting with Pale and calling them Nightbeard, being that she was enslaved by them. So you could do it in like Southern Baptist preacher words. Well, well, what I was what I was thinking when I did it was that you know now that we're uh, ASMR, yeah, like I would I would say it in you know common, but it actually comes out of my mouth or celestial. Oh yeah, say both at the same time. Mm -hmm. A choir exits your mouth upon you praying, mm -hmm. just to be trippy. Um, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Um, the Forgeborn kids are overjoyed, obviously, to see a two mile long ship and you guys being home safe. Um, yeah, imagine running and screaming robot children. Um, like, imagine, you know, those old home improvement shows where they tear down their house and then put it back and then give them a trip to Disneyland all at the same time? It's like okay. that. Fuck uh, yeah. <laughs> so. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to head out then. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. I had a lot of fun. I will Bye. see you guys next week. Now that Thank the you. furry D&D has Good happens luck. to be on all the alternating Mondays. Oh, that's what uh, Ian said he wanted. Not Ian. Fucking wanted me to teach him how to play D&D. Um. Oh. I assume you guys talked about it, so maybe. Yes, we did. Yeah. I have a he said, what would it, 
He said, what would it take to join one of your D&D games? And I said, well, the main one we've been doing too long. Yeah. <laughs> it's so I, intricate. I dude, don't think we I could add anyone else. I hadn't uh, realized it's been three years since I've joined. Yes. And we've been running the game for like four and a half. Like that's. Uh, has fucking... it been that long? Has it been that yeah. long since you joined? Yeah. It's this... I joined in fucking 2021. This game really? started in yeah. like late winter of 2019. Yeah, because um, I, 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 jo I joined right after I did the... I literally, it was the... I joined on my second time meeting Bailey. Mm -hmm. When did I, I jump I, in? Um, that would have been... It, it was like right after I got sober. So that would have been like January 2020. No, I got that was I I joined before that because okay. I was already in the game when you uh, I think I was in both games. Because that's how I think about time now, <laughs> which is rough. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I think I was in both games movie. at that point. You when you had the oh yeah, uh, when I had two, yeah, yeah, okay. So that would have been you know at least summer or fall 2020. Man. That's yeah, we're only, I, you guys are only, what, level fucking 13? Right? Yeah. 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 To be fair, though, we've leveled up. A, we can do a time jump and level up. That's fine. No. Yeah, we've, no. we've leveled up five times since I started playing. You, you so don't five, have five, five too much to do. Five levels in I mean, three been, years. Yeah, we've been, in the, we've been in this game since 2019, but, you know, uh, you know, it's only been like a year in game. It's been less than that. It's um, yeah. including including the time jump in the Feywild, like including the months in the Feywild and going back in time, because I we did this math earlier, but from um, yeah, it's since the game started started like so main timeline, it's only been like four mm. months. You guys total, it's only been like nine. Mm -hmm. Bastion's <laughs> only been awake for like four months total, yep. including the time jumps. Yeah. That's crazy. I was crazy once. God damn it. <laughs> you said the kill phrase. <laughs> I said it twice. You missed it the first time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Alright, yeah. I'll see you guys. Bye. Bye. Hey, it's your DM, Bailey Ford. I would like to thank our regular players, Darian, Matt, and Ian, Hip for our cover art, and Tabletop Audio for our background music. You can find us on Twitter at C. Illithids, and thank you especially for listening. <laughs>